Hello and welcome into this week's edition of The Walkthrough. I am your host, intern Joe Machika. Uh, South Carolina has found out their men's basketball um, seeding and tournament. They're a sixth seed in the Midwest, and they will be taking on um, number 11, Oregon. I've got the bracket right here. As I pull it up, you look at the bracket. Um, first matchup against Oregon in Pittsburgh, um, and then you take on the winner of Creighton and Akron. Creighton is a really, really, really good basketball team. They've been playing great as of late. Um, but, but we'll see. I, I would expect them to beat Akron. We'll break it all down. But um, initial rea reaction on the bracket, um, a six seed, obviously, I think, you know, you want, if you're South Carolina, you wanted to be a five seed. You wanted to be a little bit higher up there um, on the table. And let me know. Let me know in the comments, too, um, what everyone thinks, uh, you know, are they seated too high? Are they seated too, you know, too low? Do you, you know, what, what do you guys expect? Do you like the matchups here? Um, let me know um, as we're just getting things kicked off. Welcome into the walkthrough. As always, I'm your host, intern Joe Machika, um, and you know, happy Sunday, happy Selection Sunday. This it is March 17th. Um, you know, we are fully in the month of March. There is a lot of big basketball to be played here this week. Um, obviously, as we look at the bracket, I've, as I've got it pulled up, South Carolina winding up in the Midwest region with host Purdue, um, and again, they will play Oregon in Pittsburgh on Thursday. Um, you know, Dectario says battle of the bids, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know. Today, it was going to be it was interesting to see whether, you know, they were going to end up a five seed or a six seed. Um, I didn't see them leaking into the seven seed range, but um, six seed is right where you want to be. If you're South Carolina, again, you get, you know, to play, to play Oregon. Oregon is a really good team, um, you know, coming into this one, coming out of the Pac-12. Um, you know, as I pull up Oregon stats right now, um, it's uh, you're, you're going to be play, facing Jermaine Cuisinard, um, you know, South Carolina transfer. Um, he's a big leader for them, I, I think, um, for Oregon. Uh, you know, he's a true-blooded scorer. He's been leading them since he transferred out there two seasons ago. Um, you know, he um, Oregon comes to this one, um, twenty-two and or twenty-three and eleven. Excuse me, fourth in the Pac-12, twelve and eight in the conference, um, and again twenty-three and eleven overall. Um, the Ducks, Oregon Ducks, um, at the eleven seed. As again, I welcome in everyone to the walkthrough. Um, but yeah, Nectaris, Battle of the Birds. Yeah, Battle of the Birds, Battle of the Bids, same thing. Um, but yes, the Ducks and the Gamecocks facing off in the in the first round. Nick Babb says, Duck season in Pittsburgh, Viva La Paris. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it is starting to be hunting season. So um, the Ducks, again, Oregon Ducks is what awaits South Carolina in Pittsburgh. Again, Jermaine Cuisinard, former South Carolina guard leading the team in points, um, averaging 15.4 a game. Kwame Evans Jr. Um, leading them in rebounds. Cuisinard in assists and steals. And then Evans on the blocks. Uh, you know, Cuisinard, he's doing really well for the Ducks uh, as much as South Carolina fans and, and, you know, as much as you hate to see somebody else doing well with the team that they transfer to, right? I mean, it's it's kind of like rooting for, you know, your ex at that point. But then, you know, it, it comes full circle, right? Cuisinard gets a chance to go up against his former team in the Gamecocks. The first round of the NCAA tournament, um, but you know he's, he's he's been playing well this season, right? Played in 34 games, again averaging 15.4 points per game, um, 4.5 rebounds, 3.3 assists, 1.6 steals, and then um, you know so he's he's shooting 38.8 percent from the field, 74 percent from the line, um, and 32 percent from the three. This Ducks team again, um, you know they're looking good coming into the tournament. As I pull up how they did in the Pac-12, uh, you know, they or they won the Pac-12 from winners of the Pac-12 tournament, um, beating Colorado um, 75-68. Um, so that was big. They beat Arizona on their way as well. That was a big win for Oregon, right? Beating Arizona as I move my laptop there. Beating Arizona was big for Oregon. Um, you know, if and this team, I mean, they've won. Let's see, they've won their last four games after losing two to Arizona and Colorado. They get revenge. Um, Kind of the opposite of, of what South Carolina has done, right? Um, um, you, you know, you lost to Auburn in the SEC tournament. This team has lost two games in a row one time, and that was after the loss to, to Auburn. They lost to LSU, but um, you know, facing a, a similar kind of caliber team in in in, in Oregon here, one that's hot, that's avenged the losses that they've needed to. Um, so this, I mean, not the best matchup if you're South Carolina when you're looking at it again. And then if if you beat them, right, you have to go look at Creighton. Um, Bruce says, who are we playing in the first round? The Oregon Ducks, Bruce. Got it pulled up right here. Um, South Carolina and Oregon. The South Carolina is a six-seed Oregon, the 11 in Pittsburgh on Thursday. Um, so, 
It is all good. Bruce, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, but yes, that that's this is the bracket, the Midwest so far, what I have pulled up in front of you. Um, again, if South Carolina beats Oregon, they will likely await a date with Creighton, which Creighton has been one of the best teams in the country this season, right? They've been really, 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 really good. Um, and, and, you know, it's not a team you want to see in the second round. Um, that is for certain. So um, it'll be really interesting to see, again, both, all those games being first and second round for South Carolina being played in um, Pittsburgh. But you got to get past Oregon first. Got to get past Oregon. And, again, Oregon, you know, coming in, winning their last four. Um, and then, you know, they, they, they finished off the, the season. I mean, they, they beat, um, you know, Utah before they could get to the, the Pac-12 tournament. But um, after they beat Utah by one, avenging, you know, the, their two losses. But, you know, Saturday, March 2nd, they lost to Arizona 103 to 83, right? And then they go, they come back home. They lose to Colorado 79 to 75. And then, you know, they, they avenged Oregon and then they win the Pac-12 tournament. Um, so, you know, hot, hot, hot and streaky team coming in. It's not the best matchup in the world if you're South Carolina. It's not exactly what you want right here. And then, you know, if you look at the rest of the draw too, if you if you somehow escape Oregon, right? And 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 again, um, you know, the 11 seed coming in a little, maybe a little doubted coming in. Um, but here comes South Carolina and Oregon. If you make it past that first game, right? And and then you will likely have Creighton unless Akron. And we know this is March, right? There's some upsets. And also let me know for the rest of the bracket too who who you guys see in getting upset. Um, and also, I mean, if you if you guys think Akron can beat Creighton, I mean, I guess and that's looking ahead too much. But if you look at South Carolina and Oregon too, um, you know, pull up this matchup. It's um, you know, South Carolina shooting 25% from the field, um, and and you know, 33% from three. Um, free throw 71, pretty even matchup when you, when you look at it, offensive South Carolina has been able to do a little bit better on the offensive glass and Oregon has, um, really, really even on the defensive rebounds steals. You look at it, Oregon has, you know, better steals, but again, I, I think that's a front court Oregon, you know, their, their guards are lengthy. We know how lengthy Cuisinart is. I think he and Talon Cooper will be a really, really interesting matchup to see, um, in, in March. I think Talon Cooper possesses a lot of defensive capabilities. I've talked about it on this show. I've talked about it on um, the hard foul. But I think, you know, Talon Cooper is a pretty good matchup for Cuisinard. I think that's exactly who you want if you are South Carolina on Jermaine Cuisinard. Um, And then also, I mean, Michi too. Michi's had to step up and play some really, really key defense um, for this squad as well. So um, it'll, it'll be really interesting to see. And then when you when you look into the post, um, Oregon's, you know, post players, Pulling it up here, I mean, they're forwards. Um, you know, the big one, Evans, Kwame Evans. Um, he's shooting 44% from the field, 27. He can also shoot the three ball, 4.9 assist rebound or, or 4.9 rebounds per game, excuse me, 1.1 assist. Um, so yeah, Kwame, Kwame Evans Jr. is one of the forwards to watch out for. Um, and then also you look at Shellstad, you know, averaging 32 minutes a game. He's another one of their big guards shooting 45% from the field. That's really, really, really good out of one of your starting guards for Oregon. So um, watch out for him as well. He's shooting uh, just under 35% from the field or from three point range, which is huge again to Oregon. They like to move. They like to score a lot of points. Um, and, and so that's something to look out for as well, but um, going to be a really, really fun matchup in Pittsburgh on Thursday. Um, quick turnaround for South Carolina. Um, there was a chance he could have played Friday. But to be the sixth seed, I, I think you're pretty content, right? I think, you know, you still have the the, the mindset that people are still doubting you, right? Um, but then you have it, again, this is your chance to prove it. You know, go out there against a team like Oregon who just won the Pac-12 um, and make a statement. And now, again, we know how, you know, this is this is March Madness. It's winner go home. You have no more excuses at this point, right? So, um, again, South Carolina needs to get through this. How do they beat Oregon, um, in my mind? And we'll, we'll continue to talk about this throughout the week. Um, as it approaches on Thursday um, for Gamecock Central. I'm not sure the coverage plan, what we're doing, who's who's going out to Pittsburgh, who's doing what, but we will be sure to keep you guys posted. But again, um, you know, South Carolina needs to do what they're good at, right? They need to do what they're good at, trusting each other to make shots. Um, you know, we look back at the SEC tournament a little bit here, um, and you look at that game against Auburn, right? The game against Auburn, they did not shoot the ball well at all. Um, and again, you, you need to shoot more efficiently offensively. And then, um, you know, defense, you have to get the clutch stops. I think, you know, this team, when they get the clutch stops, right, they they, they get the stops where, you you know, you need them to kind of turn turn momentum a little bit in your favor, right, South Carolina basketball. 
um, you know, when you're able to get the clutch stops and, and able to, you know, throw a team off their shooting rhythm, right? I think it's a very, very big deal. Um, and, and that generates more points on the offensive end too, right? Um, Nectarios says Michi has to get going if we want to win a game. Yeah, absolutely. Michi Johnson's been really cold for South Carolina recently. Um, you know, he hit his first three well after the game was out of hand against Auburn um, on, on Friday. So, um, it, you know, you need Michi. Michi's a leader on this team. You need him to get cooking um, if you want to have success against Oregon, too. You need that microwave factor. It's March, right? You need some spontaneity. Michi Johnson's your key to that if you're South Carolina, right? He's a lovable player. Um, and so Connor says, send Joe to Pitt. Absolutely. I'd love to go to Pittsburgh. Um, it would be a whole lot of fun out there. Um, and we, we will be bringing you guys all of the coverage. So be sure to stay tuned to Gamecock Central. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and then for those of you guys on Twitter, we're also live on YouTube at Gamecock Central on YouTube. So come check us out. Come subscribe. Um, it's a lot of fun over here. But um, Goodwin says, I haven't seen Oregon play, but we have, but we get to play Cleveland. Yeah, again, it's it's kind of cool when you get to show up um, and, and show up show up a guy that transferred away right um especially in the ncaa tournament that's what this is made of and and you know back to nectarius's point um you know michi's got to get going again he's the perfect type of player for march if you're south carolina right um you know he's got that microwave element to him he he he, he can heat up um when um you know you need him to most right I, and again i you didn't see it as much in the the sec tournament and that's one thing right if, if michi gets going Good things happen, um, and and I know that's one thing Lamont Paris and, and, and the coaching staff are trying to do. They got to get him a little bit more involved um, on the offensive end, but defensively, you got to continue to play the fundamentals. Right, this team is good with their guards, um, their guard play. Um, so that's really what's going to come down to it's it's what the SEC was all year, right? Um, it, guard play, guard play, guard play. How good are your guards? Can your guards go blow by? bypass somebody and, and shoot and, and make clutch shots? Um, or are you going to crumble and, and not be able to play as much defense um, and, and get in guys' face, right? It, it really, really, to me, this matchup is going to come down to the guards um, between South Carolina and Oregon. Because, um, again, you got Cuisinard coming by or playing against Cuisinard. You you know what type of player he is already. Um, and, and, obviously, he was he was in the last staff. He, he left before Lamont Paris could get here. So, um, this coaching staff, not as familiar with him, but um, certainly um, would love to be the guy that transfers away. I, again, Gamecock football has a chance to do that with Juice Wells um, this fall, and I'm, I'm sure fans would love to give Juice Wells something to remember on his way back home to to Ole Miss. But, um, you know, Michi, 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 I think that's one thing. If you want to have success against Oregon, right, he's the microwave. You ha He hasn't been good the last couple games, and so if you really want to get him involved and, and really want to find some success on the offensive end, you need that sporadic score, um, and, and that's Michi Johnson for the South Carolina squad. Um, Talon Cooper's been really consistent. Colin Murray Boyles has been great. Um, I went back watching the game tape against um, Arkansas. He looked really good. He was in control. He was just excited to be out there flying around, blocking shots, steals. He, he, he wound up with four steals. Um, on the game against Auburn or Arkansas, excuse me. Um, and, and you, you need that kind of energy, right? And in tournament play, your bigs are going to get a little bit more exhausted. So I think for game one, um, you need a game breaker in, in the post, right? You need a game breaker in your front court. Um, somebody like a Josh Gray or a Colin Murray Boyles that can go up, block shots, and really, really get going. Um, and, 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 you know, get the ball in, our, in the guard's hands going the other way. Um, a little bit of break starting is, is huge after the rebound. So, you know, the big fellows are going to come in, you know, in South Carolina. Again, I, we talked about this in the SEC tournament, but if you can control the glass, you can beat anybody realistically. And I think Oregon kind of showed that in the Pac-12 tournament a little bit. Um, you know, they just got gritty. It's it, They got gritty and, and, and won because they got, you know, to the offensive glass. So if you're South Carolina, right, they – you, you saw that, right, um, what Oregon was able to do. And, you know, you had success in that in the SEC tournament. Now against Auburn, you saw the bad matchup there, right? Um, but, again, you, you did – it wasn't because a lack of effort on the glass. Um, and so I think if they continue with that and then, you know, the shooting has to come eventually, right? It, it, it really – it has to come around. You can't, you know, shoot as cold as you did against Auburn if you're South Carolina and have um, – or and, and, and continue to win games. So – there's no way – and now there certainly is a way. We've seen shooting go cold. But um, if they're doing the right things on defense, it's something Michi told me before the SEC tournament um, on, on Wednesday, is that, you know, when they aren't shooting the ball well, 
they need to get stops on defense. And that's what we saw in that Auburn game, right? They weren't getting the right stops. They weren't getting the stops in time to kind of force, um, you know, action on the other end for the offense. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, for Oregon, when you're playing Oregon, um, you know, you, you're going to need to get stops. And again, have the bigs get the ball in the guard's hands. Um, it's going to be really, really, really big deal. Um, and again, I'm looking for the role players to step up too. And Talon Cooper, his, 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 um, his health is going to be interesting, you know, rolled over that ankle, um, in the game against Auburn there too, you know, and we, you know, Talon is bought in as well because, um, you know, he tried to give it a go and then, you know, just couldn't, right. It's, it's not for a lack of effort for these guys, right. They're, 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 they're trying, they're, they're out there, you know, really trying to turn things around against Auburn and you couldn't. Um, but so now, Going into the SEC tournament, you've got the chance to show Jermaine Cuisinart, that whole thing. There's a lot of motivation, and there should be a lot of motivation if you're South Carolina, right? Being doubted enough to to, to be a sixth seed. And then they also throw you in a gauntlet as well. Um, again, I've got the bracket pulled up. This is the matchup. Um, but then if you look at South Carolina's region in the Midwest, you've got number one, Purdue. Um, you also have Gonzaga, Kansas, Samford, Oregon, Creighton, Texas is also kind of a dangerous team a little bit. And then Tennessee um, as well. So looking at, uh, again, March Madness is is here. South Carolina, the draw um, selection Sunday was today. South Carolina has the 11th seed Oregon in Pittsburgh on Thursday. Um, and again, game we will have all kinds of coverage on Gamecock Central. Did Clemson make it? Nectarios, yeah, they did. Um, I'm not sure what exact seed they are. Um, as we find them real quick. Yeah. Clemson made it. Yeah. They're a five seed. Um, they'll play New Mexico. They're also on the same side as North Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi state, Michigan state. That's another tough one. Mississippi state's been playing really good basketball and then Arizona. Um, so not quite, um, as hard as South Carolina's, but certainly not easy, um, for, for the boys in the upstate. Um, so yeah, they did make it in Ontario, so they're five seed. So it, it'll be interesting. The other side of the bracket from South Carolina. So I don't think we'll, South Carolina will have to worry about meeting up with Clemson unless it's in the national championship, but crazier things have happened. Um, but so again, South Carolina men's basketball playing Oregon. And again, the women's basketball is set to um, reveal at 8 PM, I believe on ESPN. Um, no, there shouldn't be any surprises with South Carolina. I mean, the number one undisputed ranked women's team in the country um, and they'll, they'll, they'll host their, their, their regional right for the women's team. So, um, you know, not waiting to 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 um delay for the reaction for the women's squad because again we kind of know what what, what it, their fate will be but again um we will definitely be sure to update you guys on on who is in their side and, and where the challenges for the women's team pose um a, a, you know a threat you know in the future so um it'll be interesting to see how that turns out and again where where LSU might lie uh, Iowa as well as some teams to watch for the women but um again Focusing on the men right now, um, South Carolina faces Oregon, PPJ Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, again, you look at the team stats, the comparison, um, you know, Oregon shooting a little bit better from the field, not by much though. South Carolina shooting nearly identical to Oregon um, from three free throws are identical um, and you know, rebound. South Carolina's got a slight edge. These teams are really, really even matched. Long story short, here, right? Um, you know what I'm looking again um, for those of you guys just tuning in. Appreciate you joining us. Um, this is the walkthrough again. Your host Joe Machika with Gamecock Central, breaking down everything um, from the men's tournament bracket from a South Carolina standpoint. We will also get into um, some women's basketball as that bracket drops at nine o'clock or at, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, 8 PM tonight. I'm um, hoping to stay live until then um, to have everything from the women's side as well. But um, also let me know what you guys think about the matchup and the, in the draw and the, and um, just how you think South Carolina will play against Oregon. And then also do you see them making it past potentially Creighton um, if, if, um, if they do win, right? And then, you know, Tennessee would lie after that, I would assume. But again, this is March. Crazier things have happened. But, um, you know, South Carolina needs to worry about Oregon first. Um, again, a guard-heavy team that can play, stand and bang in the post. Um, but right now, you're when you're looking at Oregon, South Carolina, and, and focusing on, I guess, South Carolina personally, right, um, getting into it. Um, after that SEC tournament, you have so much left to prove, right? All of the higher seeds, you know, lost 
um, because of bad matchups, right? Tennessee lost because of a bad matchup. Um, you know, Texas a m beating Kentucky because of a bad matchup. So I, I don't think you take the SEC tournament and you, you let that, you know, simmer. Uh, you know, it, it just it's unfortunate. You, you really hope you don't have to see Auburn. And again, you, there, there is no Auburn in your region. There's a lot more other scary threats in the region, but um, Oregon being one of them, um, this is going to be a really close game, I think. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be a typical 6-11 cakewalk <laughs> by any means. Um, but again, um, South Carolina's got to worry about them, but there's also Kansas, Gonzaga, and Purdue. That This region, the Midwest region, is going to be a bloodbath, right? And um, it'll be interesting to see who, who can come out of it. St. Peter's, again, they're known in March. Um, so we'll see. I don't I don't really think you dwell on the, the Auburn loss for South Carolina. I don't, I don't, I didn't see them really kind of dwelling on it. Yes, it stinks because of how everyone else in the SEC failed or, or fared, but you know, there's nothing you can do about it now. So they're, you know, they're going to take a little break this week um, and, and really get in the gym, try to correct the shooting, right? Correct the offense. I think one of these things that I need to see out of this team to have a chance to win in the first round in Pittsburgh is, you know, is the offense back on track? Are they playing back in sync? You know, I think the ball movement was fine, but the shooting wasn't there, right? I, I think the shooting was just off. You know, the timing of some shots were, weren't quite there, weren't exactly there yet. So, um, you know, they're, they're passing the ball fine. They're whipping the ball around the perimeter, um, you know, really sharing the rock. But, you know, when it comes time to to, to finding the shot, their so shot selection wasn't great. It, it was good, but, it, it, you know, it wasn't great on against Auburn. And they just missed. They just missed, plain and simple. You can't miss that many shots and expect to beat a quality team like Auburn. Um, and, you know, the SEC champions in Auburn as well. So um, it was a you know crappy weekend for, for really good basketball teams in, in Nashville. Um, again, as I mentioned, Tennessee, Kentucky, all losing their first round games um, as well. So, um, and I think Alabama lost too. Um, so yeah, other than South Carolina and Auburn, right? All the other good teams lost in Nashville. I don't think if you're, if you're South Carolina, you're not going to dwell on it at all um, going into this matchup with Oregon, right? Not at all. But so, what you need to do to stop Oregon, in my mind, right, and and from what I'm seeing from from the Ducks, again, you have a bird matchup, um, as as Nick Terrios mentioned, birds on birds, um, or battle of birds, um, but the Gamecocks against the Ducks in Pittsburgh on Thursday, the first round of the Midwest, um, in PPG Paints Arena, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and Oregon. Um, but again, to beat Oregon, you need to, um, you know, just guard play, guard play, guard play, guard play. I really think that um, it's going to come down to South Carolina's guards, who shows up and who doesn't. Um, and I, again, it'll be really interesting to see if Talon's Coop, Talon Cooper's ankle was just an ankle roll. Um, did he just roll his ankle or did he sprain it? Is there anything lingering with that? Um, excuse me. Um, is there anything lingering with Talon Cooper's ankle? Because if there is, right, you know, you're out your point guard. You're out a very, 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 very big defensive threat, right, in Talon Cooper. Talon Cooper's the type that you can put him on, you know, the number one guard and and move him around, shake him around on the defensive end. Um, You, you know, so I, I think if he's not at full health, you're, you know, re at a severe disadvantage of your South Carolina in this one. Um, simply because you can put him anywhere, put him on the number one guard, put him on the shooting guard that's heating up. Um, he just causes problems for teams defensively um, and, and and other teams offensively that, you know, is really unique to South Carolina. I think Miles Studi, obviously he took a big hit in the SEC tournament. Um, you know, he, um, excuse me, you know, if Studi can be healthy, right, I think, you know, that just adds to, you know, your wealth of, of depth if you're South Carolina. Um, because if Studi's healthy, you know, you have an extra guard slash forward off the bench. Studi's a little bit lengthier, so he can kind of guard that that hybrid three role if you're South Carolina. Um, and so, you know, we'll see what happens with, with Studi and then Cooper. Um, and so, yeah, Erica, yeah, appreciate you tuning in as always. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you need you need Miles Studi back because Diba Diba can't. You know, he isn't ready to fill that role off the bench of of the Miles Studi, um, right? So Diba Diba's just he didn't he's not ready to guard that that elite tier yet um, for as many minutes as he did against Auburn in the tournament. So um, we'll see. And again, Diba, I'm not saying Diba is is bad off the bench. Um, I just I don't think he's ready for that many minutes. So Studi, you know, a guy who's seen some basketball can also score. 
um, a little bit better than Diba can. Um, you know, having him healthy is huge because again, he's very similar to Talon, where um, you know he can play, shoot the ball, you know, score at the rack. I, Talon Cooper made a jump shot against Auburn. You know, it, it probably is going to run through. Um, um, it's probably going to you know get unnoticed, but it, it was a it was a fadeaway jump shot from like the the, the free throw line. It was before he came down. It might have been one of the ones where he came down on his ankle, but he hit a fadeaway jump shot. It was through two people. If Talon Cooper can play like that, I think you're you're gonna have success. But it, you're not gonna see that kind of Talon Cooper if his ankle's sprained or or hurt severely. So again, it it, it really depends a lot on his health and the Miles Studi's health. Um, and, and by no means am I doubting South Carolina's capabilities to beat Oregon here. Um, again, but these are two really, really similar teams. This is, again, the, the NCAA tournament. This is why, you know, these games are exciting because they're so closely matched. Um, I, I think, you know, Oregon's real, um, you know, quality wins have come in the Pac-12 tournament. Um, again, they lost to Arizona twice during the year and they, they, beat they beat them in the the pac-12 tournament on their way to a pac-12 title um but you know you lose to alabama and then you also lose to yeah arizona twice in the middle of the season and those were your only two other ranked games for for oregon so by no means have they played as tough of a schedule as south carolina has in the sec um william jones says I've I heard Oregon runs the court. Yeah, you're gonna need to be ready for this, right? Because Jermaine Cuisinard, you know, he's got that athletic frame. They 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 really like to run and gun. Um, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And and you've seen that um, right? But I, I think the quality of opponents too. Um, South Carolina has a little bit harder of a strength of schedule when you look at it from a conference perspective, having to play Kentucky twice, Tennessee twice. Um, you know, Mississippi State twice. It's 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 a little bit different. But again, I, the way the only thing that really matters in March is that you're playing your best basketball in March. And Oregon certainly is right. Um, you know, they won their last three games to win the conference tournament. They beat Arizona 67 to 59. It was by no means a like a a close or I mean, it was a little bit closer than than you would like, but by no means. Was it was it really a close game? So Oregon, they they ran away with that one. Shellstad, the the leading scorer, he had twenty one. Um, you know, he, this kid is really good. Again, Jackson Hellstad or Shellstad, um, you know, running alongside Jermaine Cuisinart. He's a freshman out of Westland, Oregon, averaging thirteen point one points per game. Um, his last couple games, he's been big. Um, seventeen points against Colorado, and then um, twenty one points against Arizona in the final. Um. And then, or oh, so seventeen in the. I, I guess I suppose that was a makeup game um, against Colorado, possibly. Or no, t- Colorado was in the final. Excuse me. Yes, so twenty-one points in the semifinals um, against Arizona. So really, really, really big for them. Um, Jackson Shellstad, the guard. He's playing alongside um, Jermaine Cuisinard. So watch out again. It's it. Uh, listen to me now. Like it's this game is going to come down to the guards. It really is. Um, and and. Can Michi step up when when you need him the most? Like, we'll see, right? It, it it's gonna come down to where South Carolina has been the weakest at the at, at in recent games because we've seen. I mean, Josh Gray, Colin Murray, Boyles, BJ Mack. I mean, BJ hasn't been shooting the ball well. You know, I I really think he's he's been good. He's been better than uh you know the the rest of the back court. And again, I BJ he goes both ways, right? He he plays both ends. He's part of the front court. He's part of the back court. And yes, he's a power forward but you know he's a stretch four um but again it's going to come down to the guards do your guards want to score or you know are your guards going to um you know just kind of lose it in the bright lights and again you this this also goes hand in hand with the big stepping up too um but south carolina you know you're playing with house money you you need to reinvigorate that you need to you know find that spark right find that you know attitude that we're playing with house money listen who who gives a darn what anyone else thinks, right? Let's go in there, play with house money, and just, you know, play our game. Trust each other to make shots. And when they do that, right, I think the offense starts to flow. Now, when when things get out of their control, and this team, again, we saw against Arkansas, South Carolina plays really, really good when things are in their control. Um, but when things get out of their control, like they did against Auburn, right, things, you're not shooting the ball well, um, you know, defensively, you're you're not getting the right stops at the right time. And then the offensive glass, you know, it's, it's very streaky. You're going here, you're going there. Sometimes you can get a board. Sometimes you can't. 
it just needs to be a very consistent performance from South Carolina. And again, consistently through the times you have control over the game and time, consistency through the times that you don't, right? It's going to go up and down. It's March, but you have to come out here, um, you know, and, and really, really size up Oregon and, and, and play them hard. Um, so it's, you know, you're going to need to play to the whistle against a team like this, a team that plays fast. Like, again, like William said, I heard Oregon runs the court. Yeah, when they play really fast, you're going to need to, you know, throw bodies on guys, you know, really get physical. And yes, the, the NCAA tournament will be called tighter. So, um, you know, you, you just got to stay within yourself, but um, also, you know, find a way to knock them out of their rhythm. And I think that that is part of South Carolina's game plan for every team that they play. Right. When you have a guard like Talon Cooper, who's as lengthy as he is um, and he can go guard um, as, as much as, you know, he can. And then Michi also too, I think um, very underrated, um, very underrated defensive threat. Um, with Michi Chicken Emperor says, "Oh, I love that YouTube name, by the way." But their big man is Josh. Or their big man is Josh Gray, sized and very solid, sixty percent free throw shooter. So we have to make him earn it. Have to drive into the hoop and draw fouls, shut him down. Yeah, absolutely, Chicken Emperor. Um, you know, it, it you um, you know, force that guy to the rack, make him earn it, and I, it, that, this is the perfect matchup for Josh Gray. This is exactly what South Carolina fans have wanted, right? You've wanted Josh Gray to to be the guy to step up. And, you know, be a meme in a bad MF, you know, excuse, pardon, pardon the illusion, the language of the language there. But, uh, you you know, you need Josh Gray to be the horse, be the gosh darn, like be the, be the horse, be the man, go down there, block shots, you know, um, so and, and foul him too, like really make him earn it. Because again, like I mentioned, you know, this is the NCAA tournament. And, you know, if I don't know if you guys know this, but the officials move on to the next round with the teams, right? Depending on how close and how, and how well they call the game. So naturally they're going to call it a little bit tighter, right? If this isn't the conference tournament, these aren't the conference referees that have been, you know, refing these guys all season. No, these are fresh guys. These are different refs, different looks on the game. So um, they're going to call it a little bit tighter. So, you know, if, if you have a guy like chicken Emperor says 60% free throw shooter. Now, again, that's over 50%. You're not going to follow him every time you go down the floor, but um, you know, don't let him take any open jump shots. And that, I think, this part of the game leads to South Carolina's favor. If they can find a way to exploit this, right, and not try to get so lost and, and running with the guards and, and ooh, look, three-pointer and, and three bombs, um, you know, if you can run in transition and, again, force force the big men to earn it. It's not their, – their big men aren't the strongest part of their team. Um, it's their guards. Their guards are the strongest part of, of Oregon. So if you can really force the big men to make plays against you, when it, you, you clearly have elite bigs, right? You have Colin Murray Boyles, who is one of the best freshmen and the best big men in the SEC, hands down. Um, Josh Gray, again, Josh Gray is probably one of the better big men to come off the bench. Um, six men, six man, um, big men. I, Cause again, I can't, I, can we call him the six man? Yes. Yes and no, because, um, again, he's not necessarily a six man that comes on. But, um, you know, he's been the best big man off the bench in college basketball um, from from what I know so far, minus the guy up at, up at NC State um, this weekend. But Jay Diz says it will be called much better than what we've seen in SEC play. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, that's just com- that just comes down to SEC conference officials. Um, and, you know, not to, not to bash on conference officials at all. It's just an entirely different way of calling a game, right? Because these conference officials are letting them play, as you should, right? It is the conference tournament. Um, and, and, you know, you um, it is the conference tournament. And you, these guys have been, you know, playing each other for, for, for weeks now, right? And so – when you're playing each other week in and week out um, over and over and over again. And tell them I'm trying to get the, the time for you here in a second. Um, and if anyone else knows, please feel free to drop in the chat here while I also look and, and talk at the same time. Um, but trying to get a time for you real quick. Um, but yeah, um, you know, in the SEC play, they, these guys, they, they try to, um, they, they, they let them play a little bit because, you know, conference tournaments, there is emotion on the line. There is, you know, prior history. There's stuff that happened in the conference slate that 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 means something. That you're playing for something. Tilton Robinson, Robertson, Robertson asks, um, excuse me. Do you do you think we have a chance to win against Oregon? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think again. And I was breaking it down. Chicken Emperor's comment um, back here. Um, do you think you have a chance to win against Oregon? Absolutely. A very good chance to win against Oregon. Um, if if you know, Josh Gray and, and BJ Mack and Colin Ray Boyles can play the way that they have been 
Um, you know, when when you're winning games, um, you know, you need to control the glass, be mean MFers down there, right? And and yes, again, as I mentioned, um, the officials will, will will call this one a little bit tighter because you know they are playing to move on essentially, or are you know calling to move on um, in the NCAA tournament. If they call a good game, they'll move on to the or to the NCAA tournament or in the next round of the NCAA tournament. So. Um, you know, it's going to be called a little bit differently than the conference tournament, but, um, you know, I, I still think you need to, you know, expose where you can in the paint, um, and, and really, really, you know, just try to run the front court because if you try to get in a shooting match with these, with these guards, right. Um, you know, these guards and, and high flying guards. And again, like William Jones said, Oregon likes to run the floor really well, um, and get out and transition, um, if you try to just get in a shootout with these guards, I think, you know, the way that's, or at least the way that South Carolina has been playing recently, I don't know if you can keep up with the, with the guards, the way that you have been playing. So, and I, and, and to be honest, I, I also think, you know, true like South Carolina basketball, if, if you're going to be winning any games, you need both the guards and the big men to be playing well. Um, Jay Diz says tough draw for us to make the sweet 16 need to to get his legs back. He looks like he can barely walk around during TOs hope, he can get some cryo treatment or something before we play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think Talon J Diz, you're hitting the nail on the head there. Um, Talon Cooper is a very, very big success, uh, or is a very big part of the successes of this team. Um, right. You know, he's the general, right. He, he, he really is that point guard that you need for South Carolina to play defense, to go, to go both ways. He was like that, um, at, at Minnesota, he was like that at Juco, um, you know, his basketball talents are really unique and to have him at full strength, you know, just really churning and, and, and really just playing hard defense on guys, locking guys up. Right. Um, it's, it's very, very key to, um, to the success. Right. So again, you, you need to line Cooper at full health. And, and again, Jay Diz, I, I'm, I'm also gonna, I'll raise you a, a, a mile study because I think miles study is, is really, really important. And you saw that against Auburn too. You were missing Miles Studi, and yes, Studi was ready to go for that first Auburn game. But you could tell that that um, you know Auburn was having their way, and without Studi, just you know pr providing a different look, um, things kind of went differently. So um, you know, a healthy Miles Studi goes a long way in this game as well because he he just backs up your guards, right? He's he's um, depth for for the guard play, um, you know, because once you get out of Jacoby Wright and Zach Davis. Um, you know, and, and the, I guess you put Deba in there, uh, you know, you're kind of out of depth or trusty depth. Um, and Tilton says, yeah, I agree. It's a tough draw. Hopefully we can make it to the next round. We haven't been there in a few years. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And you know, it, it, this is March, man. This is, this is March. This is the best time to be alive and, and to be, a, you know, a, a basketball fan. If your team makes a tournament, cause anything can happen. Anything can happen. If you look back, at South Carolina's famed run um, as many years ago, or I can't remember exactly how many years ago, um, but the Frank Martin run in 20, oh my gosh, I'm, 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 I'm a bad reporter for not knowing exactly what year that is too, but um, you know, March is a lot of fun and, and South Carolina has been, you know, in the 11 seed before too, um, um, you know, as, as a program. So, um, you know, it's, uh, fans, fans, fans know how, how easy it is to win, to win this game as an 11 seed. So, um, you know, they, they have to be on the ball tough draw for sure. But again, um, you know, they can definitely win this game. They really, really can win this game because, you know, Colin Murray boils, if he steps up, man, if he, if Colin Murray boils plays the way he was, um, against Arkansas, you're going to win. You, you might win. Um, you've got a really good shot against Creighton if, if you can do that CMV. And then you just all like, that's all you need if you're South Carolina to win to win this game, right? Is is the bigs to play like you do, and again, big there, um, Jay Diz, like we said, uh, or I'm sorry, Chicken Emperor, um, the big men. That's where South Carolina has the advantage, um, and and you know your bigs are used to playing against SEC talent, man. I don't think the bigs are, are as good or anywhere. I mean, maybe maybe the Big Ten, but you know every team. And the SEC has big men and has big men that can play, um, that can play both ways. So, gotta attack through the bigs. You need Colin Murray Boyles. You need, yeah. Tilton says we need to attack the rim and not take so many three pointers, especially if we're not hitting Mac and Mac big play inside. Yeah, no, absolutely, um, one hundred percent. Slow the game down. William Jones says yes, 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 yes. Find the shot that you want. 
Um, you know, I, I think the Michi Microwave 3, the one that you kind of that Michi likes to take from the logo ish area, um, is 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 um every once in a while you take that and and for Michi that's a good shot, right? But you know, and it's not necessarily the ball movement that I'm you know saying that needs to improve. It's it's more of the shot selection to slow the game down. And I the ball movement doesn't necessarily need to slow down. You could still move the ball and have the game slow down. It's just finding extra looks. Um and and if South Carolina, you know, so move the ball really well, right? They'll 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 move it, they'll swing it. It'll be really good ball movement and then they just won't be able to commit and they won't be able to hit um their shots. Right. So it comes down to being clutch too. You gotta be clutch in the tournament. Um and again I, just, I pull it up here. Glad we aren't in Spokane. Long flights don't help injuries and cause swelling. Yes, absolutely. Josh Gray. Oh, yeah. Josh Gray inside Tilton. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, it's going to come down to the bigs in this one. Um, but, yeah, JJ's glad we aren't in Spokane. Absolutely. Spokane would have been tough. Um, and, you know, wherever the Gamecocks would have been, you know, we'll be sure to have all your coverage here on GamecockCentral.com but, um, and, and on the Gamecock Central YouTube channel. If you guys are watching on Twitter, be sure to go over and check us out on YouTube. We are live on YouTube as well. Um, but, yeah, glad they are in Spokane. Um, gives us an opportunity to kind of cover this one as well, um, hopefully up in Pittsburgh as we try to figure out a coverage plan as well. But, yeah, Tilden, um, Josh Grant, I, that's that's what it comes down to, points in the paint, controlling the offensive glass. Second chance points is is a really big thing. I think if you're South Carolina, you want to try to find that, find the inside. Um, you know, if you if you can find a matchup, Gray getting big, um, BJ getting big, couple moves in the post, and then maybe you know, um, you know, rolling to the inside, finding a bucket. Um, really, really good stuff for 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 BJ. Um, I saw against you know Arkansas. If they again South Carolina, if they can play like they did against Arkansas inside, they'll be just fine. They'll be just fine. Um, you know, CMB was causing havoc. Josh Gray out there causing havoc. And um, just an overall really, really good showing if you're South Carolina. So, um, it, uh, you know, you need to play like you did against Arkansas. You, um, But if you don't, right, you know, you need to slow the game down. Slow the game down, like William says. Um, so, really, really good stuff. Um We've gotten to 42. We got a lot of people in here, so I appreciate everyone tuning in to a special selection show edition of the walkthrough. Um, and again, we are awaiting the women's basketball announcement. Um, and and we, I will stay live. I, I believe I'm going to try to stay live until the women's basketball announcement. And shocker, they're going to be the number one overall ranked seed um, and the undisputed number one seed. But um, I'll also stay on a little bit longer to you know just kind of break down and see who they got and, and who could cause, um, you know, issues for them. But again, looking at South Carolina's matchup in the first round, you've got Oregon, the 11 seeded Oregon ducks. Um, and as I have the matchup pulled up, but, um, going back to the bracket itself. And again, guys, let me know, does, does Creighton scare you guys too? Um, they, they, they're matching up against Akron. They're a really good basketball team as well. You Gonzaga, Kansas, all, you know, blue bloods, a lot of blue bloods in the Midwest. Who else scares you? Um, Corey says, Joe, any idea what time the game will be? I will find that for you actually right now, Corey. Um, as I look it up here, bear with me here. Um, because I'm, I'm, I've been struggling. I've been trying to look in the background. If any of you guys, or if anybody else watching, um, can help us out here too. Just trying to find what time the game will will be. Um, but again, um, South Carolina taking on Oregon in the first round, the 11 seed um, Oregon Ducks. Let's see. Um, trying to figure out if ESPN has it up yet. Um, I have not seen anything. Yet, um, about a time yet, Corey. So, um, stay posted. I'm sure somebody will have it here soon. Um, and, uh, it, it, it'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll have it first thing whenever it drops here. Um, JD says, Clem sucks, got an easy draw and a five seed. Auburn got screwed, but glad they're not near us. Yeah. No, I think if you're South Carolina, you're thinking you're lucky stars, um, that you're not near Auburn. Um, and yeah, chicken emperor says, haven't seen a time yet in my searches. Yeah. Hi. I'm also kind of striking out. So I apologize for what, for, for the time. And this is, I'm on the NCAA, like this is the March madness live, um, like the, the official website. So, um, I'm not sure exactly why the, the times aren't there, but, um, yeah, we, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to get it to you guys whenever it does drop. Um, but so, um, let's see, we're, 
hitting the 45 minute mark. I guess I will get the ads out of the way before we stretch it to uh, to make it to the women's tournament. Um, we're still going to roll live, but again, I do want to talk to you guys about our sponsors. First off is our good friends over at Liberty Tax. Tax anxiety is an uncertain feeling you get right before doing your taxes, but you don't have to go through alone. The tax team at Liberty Tax in Irmo, Lexington, and Columbia will walk you through the process, clear up any confusion, and guarantee you'll get the biggest possible refund or your money back. It's tax time. If you're in a hurry for your refund, call on the tax team at Liberty Tax. They are fast, accurate, and guaranteed. On the other hand, if you think you might be Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Sam, talk to the Liberty Tax team to make sure you're not paying more than you should owe. They'll find every possible deduction for you. Locally owned and operated, staffed by tax professionals from your neighborhood. Open 99 on weekdays and 9 to 5 on Saturdays with multiple service options. Start through the Liberty Tax mobile app or through the desktop portal. Make an appointment or just walk in. Give a call to upload your tax documents. And when you come in, your return will be ready to review and sign. Give them a call on your screen right now, 803-462-5576. Once again, 803-462-5576. The stream is also brought to you by our good friend Clint Hammond of the Movement Mortgage Network. Give him a call on your screen right now. Um, and for those listening, 803-771-6933, 803-771-6933. In need of help with your mortgage, give our good friend Clint Hammond of the Movement Mortgage Network a call. He's been in the mortgage industry since 2003, which allows him to help everyone from the first-time home buyer to the complicated and complex jumbo buyer, whether you're looking to purchase a new home or you finance. Nothing is more important than a well-thought-out financial strategy that comes with five-star customer service. He's even helped out our very own Wes Mitchell and former Gamecock quarterback Perry Worth with their mortgages. So, again, give our guy Clint a call. It's above us on all of our Gamecock Central Live programming. Once again, 803-771-6933. So back to the hoops, and we can also talk some baseball, too. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys got for, for baseball. Um, again, baseball avoiding the sweep um, and Ole Miss. We had Peyton Butt out there, um, one of our interns. She's great. Um, so if you guys missed any of her coverage, go check that out. It's on at GamecockCentral.com. She, she did a great job this weekend. But um, we can we can also throw some baseball in there as well. But currently talking about the bracket. Again, South Carolina men's basketball um, awaits number 11 Oregon at PPG Paints Arena um, on Thursday. The game is on Thursday. I'm hoping to make it up there um, for the game on Thursday. Um, I have friends up in Pittsburgh. It would be really cool to cover an NCAA tournament, um, but we shall see. Um, But, again, South Carolina, breaking down the matchup a little bit again, for those of you guys just joining, we have quite a bit of people in here on a Sunday night, so appreciate everyone come and hang out and talk some basketball with me. Um, And then, again, feel free. uh, We can talk some baseball as well. I know the women's basketball team has been off. Um, the softball team also doing work as well, but, um, yeah, this, this matchup with Oregon is really the only thing you, you want to focus on right now. You're not focused on, on possibly Creighton because again, yeah, RL Smith hits, hits the nail on the head. You get the rematch against Jermaine Cuisinard, um, former Gamecock Jermaine Cuisinard. Um, you know, he's, this is his second year away from the program, obviously transferred to Oregon last season. Um, with with the light of Frank Martin's firing and just wanted a new start. Um, Cuisinard's been their best player. He's averaging 15.1 a game. Um, and 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 so, you know, it's it's revenge, I guess, for, for the guys that have played with him, Josh Gray and Jacoby Wright. Um, but a lot of this South Carolina roster is really new. And RL, I'm not trying to discount you there because, again, I think there's a lot of fans that have a little intrigue with this one. And Cuisinard, um, as well, is certainly going to be gunning against his former school um, to beat him. So, um, certainly a line of motivation for, for a lot of people in this one, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, pretty good stuff for, 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 for Cuisinart. Again, he's been able to go out there and make, make something of himself in Oregon. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. It's like, right. It's like when you see your out, your ex out in public and again, uh, you know, that's kind of the situation with your main Cuisinart. So certainly Gamecock fans, um, you know, wanting to push South Carolina over the line. And, and again, that, that wasn't to discount it at all or else. Um, but, um, I just think, I think there's maybe a couple players on the South Carolina side that are playing that way. And, you know, um, there, you know, probably is a little bit more motivation for the guys that, you know, that came in and and replaced them too. It's like showing them, showing them why, you know, they're better, but this team has a lot more playing for, um, but it certainly makes it interesting too, RL as well. Um, these revenge games are always really interesting. Um, and I, again, I think that the one I have circled the most is juice Wells returning to Williams Bryce stadium. Every, that 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 game is going to be ridiculous when Ole Miss comes to South Carolina next football season next fall. It is going to be madness, just kind of based on the whole situation that transpired. And granted, this this game isn't at South Carolina, so fans don't really you know get to to you know see Cuisinart up close again. But 
Uh, I'm, I don't doubt at all that they're going to be a lot of Gamecocks out there in Pittsburgh on Thursday. Um, I like my, I, I likewise am, am hoping to make it for, um, you know, the NCAA tournament, make it up there to Pittsburgh. Again, we're trying to figure out Gamecock Central what we're trying to do. But again, we will have all of the coverage on GamecockCentral.com and Gamecock Central on YouTube. Again, appreciate everyone tuning in. And this uh, we're, we're going to go live until the women's bracket comes out. Um, you know, trying to stay live, keep it posted. There's no doubt in my mind what South Carolina will end up on the women's side of things. But um, again, because they'll be the number one seed. They will be the number one overall seed. Um, and, you know, who they play um, or who, who could potentially cause them issue first is the real question with this women's squad. But um, again, looking at the men's, it, it, it's March Madness. They have their opponent. Um, and so, yeah, again, looking at Oregon, the Oregon Ducks, the Battle of the Birds, um, most certainly um, South Carolina awaiting Oregon. First round of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament at PPJ Paints per Arena in Pittsburgh. Um, again, the keys to this one, again, breaking it down for those of you who just joined us. Uh, South Carolina cannot run and shoot in this game. Uh, you know, you cannot let the guards get into, you know, a, a boxing match, right? You need to have execution from your post players. You need to have execution like you did um, against Arkansas if you want to win this one because, again, Oregon struggles in the paint. Um, and in South Carolina, you need – you basically – what I've been saying this whole show is you need – you need um, your post players to be bad MFers, man. You need them to be bad MFers. Um, because you know, Oregon will get out and run it with you and go, um, uh, with the guards. So you need to get back down the floor. It's, it's going to be a, a really, really tough game to have in your first round, right? Because Oregon's going to play you hard. We know that they like to get out and run in transition and, you know, you're going to have some soft legs. Um, you are going to have some soft legs in, you know, at going into round two. And if you go going to round two, looking at it here, we've got the men's bracket up against South Carolina, a six seed in the Midwest um, for the NCAA men's tournament. But, um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have to play most likely Creighton, who Creighton is one of the best teams in, in the country um, as I pull up their stats a little bit, looking into them. And there, there is no reason you really need to, to focus on Creighton yet. Um, uh, you know, you you have your you should have your hands full. Um, if you're South Carolina, you've got your hands full with Oregon scouting. Um, but uh, what basically what you need to do to beat Oregon is again, like I said, you need your post presence to be bad MFers. Josh Gray needs to come in, um, do some damage. Um, RL says our game Thursday with time TBD. Yeah, um, exactly. We're unsure of the time. I've been trying. Um, we've had a couple of people check in and ask um, what time um, we. Uh, we, we were playing three teams from the state of Alabama playing in Spokane. That's only a 36 to 40 hour drive. Good job, NCAA. Yeah. Um, South Carolina's drive. I can't imagine. I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys have, have done the route to Spokane. Um, I, I'm very interested to see what that is if anyone wants to drop that in the chat. But thank God uh, South Carolina doesn't have to go to Spokane, only, out, only up to Pittsburgh, which again is a drive, but um, to be announced, William says, absolutely, is the time for, for the game. Um, so we shall see, um, where, where that lies, but again, they are playing on Thursday in Pittsburgh. Um, and again, I was, you know, alluding into it. I don't, I, I think plenty of Gamecocks will be up there making the drive to Pittsburgh to watch Gamecocks play. Um, they're zero down in my mind that there will be quite a bit of Garnet and black in Pittsburgh. And I know there will be a little bit, um, already, um, plenty of pitch or plenty of South Carolina people in Pittsburgh as well. Um, very large student population. Shout out to those of you you and my friends from Pittsburgh um, that I've met at South Carolina. Um, a lot of Yinzers um, in, up there in Pittsburgh already, so um, going to be quite a bit of Garden and Black. In South Carolina, all, uh, shout out to you guys too because um, every like y'all travel really, 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 really well. Um, similar, I, I grew up with Notre Dame Athletics. Um, it's really, really similar to how Notre Dame travels for a bowl game um, and, and how many Notre Dame fans come up. South Carolina brand is really, really big, and you know I've, I've been impressed. But um, again, Breaking down this matchup, Columbia to Spokane is, oh my gosh, 2,555 miles or a 38-hour drive. That's crazy, RL. That's crazy. Um, I certainly would not be driving 38 hours. Um, I, I'm not sure my Jeep could make that, but um, we, we thank God, knock on wood, um, 
thank God that you didn't have to do that, right? Pittsburgh is only what? I believe it's a 10-hour drive um, as I look it up, PPG Paints Arena. And I will not be putting this on the, the main uh, mirroring because, you know, cannot be giving away my, uh, you know, address or anything like that. But PPG Paints Arena is also kind of a hike, but um, I, I don't doubt. Yeah, the PA drive is only eight hours. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Um, it's 538 miles. Yeah, not bad at all. I expect to see plenty of South Carolina people, you know, making the drive. And then again, as I mentioned, there's tons of Yinzers um, and Yinzers being slang for for um, Pittsburgh people. If you're from Pittsburgh, that's that's what they call it uh, for those. But yeah, so there are tons of Yinzers in um, that, that went to school here that are already back home in Pittsburgh. I know a couple of them um, and I met a couple of people from Pittsburgh who um, in the South Carolina. So there, there are already a ton of South Carolina people there. Um, and again, plenty, plenty driving up. Like I said, um, grew up in, around Notre Dame athletics and South Carolina's fan base travels just as well as Notre Dame, if not better. Um, so 538 miles, that's a long trek. Um, but if, if you guys plan on going, let me know. Um, you know, it, it should be quite an interesting first round again. South Carolina facing Oregon, and we are waiting. I believe the tip-off show for the women starts at eight o'clock. So um, I'm going to rally on and and wait till their at least the, their side of the bracket has been announced. Um, and again, we've got 800 and around 890 people in here tonight. So appreciate you guys. Um, for those of you guys watching on Twitter, check us out on YouTube at GameCockCentral.com. Um, like, subscribe the stream if you guys like it um again we are live every sunday at 7 p.m my show the walkthrough um so it's been a lot of fun so far and again planning on staying live until south carolina's um the women's basketball draw gets announced starting at eight um again i do i am really interested to see who could step in the way of the number one ranked women's team dawn staley and her squad i saw her this weekend at the or at the men's basketball tournament up in nashville um It'll be interesting to see if if the perfect season can can happen, or if 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 um, you know there 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 will be an LSU or an Iowa standing in the way. Obviously, they've beaten LSU um, already, but um, we'll see. We shall see. Um, we'll just have Sandstorm on repeat the entire drive. That is how you do it, Arl. That's exactly how you do it. I believe that that that's the most South Carolina way to to do the drive. Um, so. Uh, it, Shout out to you if, you know, in Sandstorm, only a couple minutes long. I, again, not a math guy and not thinking off the top of my head how many times um, you would have to listen to Sandstorm um, for, for your drive. If, uh, you know, if you listen to it the entire way up, um, that it, it could could be interesting. If you if, if somebody wants to do the math on that, that's that's also insane. Um, but the, these game, you can take the Amtrak from Columbia to Pittsburgh only 20 hours. Yeah, that's not bad for those for the stu for those of my my fellow student friends watching, um, and and you know like myself are, are balling on a budget the Amtrak and I'm sure, um, you know it's uh it's a little bit cheaper too. But hey, I mean whatever works. Get to get to Pittsburgh one way or another to support South Carolina because it, it's it's the NCAA ben, men's basketball tournament. There's there's nothing better of it. There's nothing better than this time of year. Um, so it is like March Madness, man. The Ides of March. South Carolina has a lot of potential in, in their region to, to, to you know, if, if we back up a little bit here, as I lean back in my chair as well, but if we back up a little bit here and look at the whole, whole darn thing, the whole Midwest, the Midwest where your boy in turn Joe is from, um, you know, Purdue, number one overall seed. That's, again, really, really, really tough draw. Um, and if you look at, you know, what South Carolina can kind of do in it, um, got to beat Oregon. Got to beat Oregon. Starts with the bigs. Starts with Josh Gray. Starts with BJ Mack. Um, duking it. Are you doing the girls? Yeah, Darius. I, I plan on it. Um, whenever this does come out, um, or whenever the the women's does come out, and again, whenever I can kind of see it, um, in front, I'll I'll be sure to have a visual. Um, RL roughly 120 times listening to it back to back. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, Darius planning on doing the girls as well. Um, and their their selection show starts here. Um, in just a minute. Um, so um, once the girls get rolling, uh, we'll, we'll preview just kind of their bracket, who who could cause issues for them. We know Iowa, LSU, Linger, um, other good teams as well. So um, we'll be sure to pull the girls up. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure why it started um, an extra um, an extra hour later. But um, so selection show should have started now. And when I, as soon as I have a visual and, and we'll be in the comments too, breaking it all down. But um, as of now, we were talking about 
South Carolina in, in, in the men's t- tournament. And until we get the, the women's, we will do that. Um, but and, and shocker, I, I think I can say it's safe to say this: they will be the number one overall seed. Um, so, to be determined who they who they have to play again, round one, you're out of it with without Cardoso. Um, so, we'll see. We we will see. But um, before we kind of put a bow on this men's tournament again, as as the women's tournament starts to release itself, um, how um, an RL talking doing the, we're we're doing the math on how many times you you have to listen to Sandstorm, um, you know, going from from here to Pittsburgh, 120 times back to back, which is crazy. Uh, but so what, who else scares you in this region besides, you know, obviously Creighton, Tennessee, um, you know, Purdue, Kansas. Um, but is there anyone else that, that, that jumps, us, uh, jumps out? Jay Dis says the, the net F is bad. We are the lowest rated six seed. Every pundit I've seen has is picking Oregon over us. I hate NCAA. It serves no purpose. Yeah. I mean, the net, it, it's, it's tricky. South Carolina seems to always have gotten, you know, shafted in, in, in the nets uh, or in the net rankings. Uh, and I, again, this draw, all the pundits seem to be picking Oregon. I, again, I think um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, I, you know, they can win this game. Does it match up with, with South Carolina really well with the way that their guards have been playing recently? No, but if, if the bigs, if South Carolina's bigs can play the way that they did against Arkansas, I don't think they should have a problem against Oregon, but Oregon is hot. That's, that's the thing that scares me with Oregon. Um, and then that, yeah, I, I, how they're ranked so long. I, and I'm still trying to work on con- comprehending the net, um, and really trying to, you know, just get it, um, you know, like have, have an understanding of why South Carolina is always so low, but they just, they just don't for some reason. And so now you have to go play a Pac-12 champion Oregon team who, um, just beat, you know, number six. Arizona, like, so the, this team is really, really, really friggin' hot um, coming into it. RL says, for the girls, it will be interesting where they place Iowa and LSU. I am sure the committee wants th- those three teams to meet as late in the tourney as possible. Yeah, and watch out for Notre Dame, too. Um, you know, the Fighting Irish. Shout out to my grandmother, who was a season ticket holder um, at, at Notre Dame for the women's team. Um, but th- those gals have been hot. They've been um, – they won the ACC tournament, um, you know, beating NC State, which was big. Um, and, and South Carolina already beat Notre Dame in Paris. I, I don't think, you know, I think outside of L- Iowa and LSU, I think um, Notre Dame is probably South Carolina's biggest um, test. But um, we'll see. We, we will see as this uh, bracket rolls on. And I'm trying to pull it up here. Um, sorry, wrong window. Um, as I'm trying to get the latest on the women's tournament, we know what seed they're going to be. We just kind of have to see what happens to Iowa and LSU, right, um, as, as we pull it up. Um, the, the, the women's side and feel free to update me in the, in the chat as well as it comes up, but um, I'm going to stop mirroring with the men's. Um, and again, talking about the women's basketball team here, um, you're going to be without Camila Cardoso. It has been a little bit since we've talked about the, the women's squad um, about, about a week to be exact. Um, Camila Cardoso um, will be out for your first round game. Um, and again, RL makes a fantastic point right here. Um, it will be interesting where they place Iowa and LSU because you know, it's reality. In reality, it's three teams at the top, unless there's some kind of upset bid um, from an NC State or or Notre Dame. And you know, I, I think the four one seeds will be um, Iowa, LSU, and Notre Dame because Notre Dame, you know, did a good job. They were they were on a run. They won the ACC. Um, so it, it 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 will be quite interesting to see where everyone else ends up. And again, I think it, the big three in women's basketball right now: Iowa, LSU. Um, and then South Carolina, of course, um, and South Carolina is, you know, they, they're the ones with the unbeaten record, right? They're the ones with, who need to go perfect. They, South Carolina, <laughs> I guess somehow still have, um, you know, a lot to lose entering this, um, after everything that happened in the SEC tournament, you somehow ended up with your perfect record. And so now you're playing for it, right? You're playing for all of the pride and, and the joy that comes with, um, you know, um, avenging a, a final four loss last season with the, the freshies into Iowa. Um, and so I, I also think Caitlin Clark's playing with a lot. And so is LSU, right? The, the three teams that are, you know, being looked at the most going into this tournament. And now I think out of the three, I think Don's is, is playing with, with, you know, the least um, or playing for, um, you know, for, for the least amount of stuff, right? Like they, um, you know, are kind of playing with house money a little bit too, because the freshies are gone. Right. Um, so 
now that the fresh users are gone, I again, I, I had a chance to see Dawn this weekend. Um, but um, I, I, I have a feeling that that her teams, whenever they go to the final four, and this is just on on general, whenever they go to the final four and lose, they're coming back to win the damn thing next year. Um, Iowa and ND are in the Iowa City bracket. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. Wow. Um, again, trying to pull up um, Twitter. When we have it, when 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 we see where exactly South Carolina's the women's, but Iowa and Notre Dame again, two big, two of the the kind of bigger teams I was watching for this women's team, uh, or for this women's bracket, um, are are in, um, you know, the same side, which is crazy. Um, so interesting to see, um, and obviously South Carolina being at the top, the one seed overall, um. Shouldn't shock anyone. Now, I, I will I will ask people this. LSU is in Stanford's bracket. Okay, so then I'm assuming it's going to be NC State um, in, in, in our side. So, wow. They, they, so, I win ND. That's going to be a big clash. Um, and then LSU and Stanford. Um, and I, I, with the women's side, I, I expect um, what, what team – um lose their starting five and still be yeah no nobody darius um you know i i agree i think that's the power of dawn staley she's a genius she is a basketball genius and what she's done with this south carolina women's team needs to be studied um because she's been on one hell of a run um and just the ability to continue to be relevant year after year after year and after you lose your entire starting five right and you have the youngsters, the the underclassmen, the Chloe Kitts, the Ashlyn Watkins, who barely got off the bench last year, right? Who who were, who were squeaking off the bench. Chloe Kitts played a lot more. Which credits Chloe Kitts, but yeah, Darius, it's 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 ridiculous. It needs to be studied what she's doing with this team, and you know they're better than they were last year, is which is hard to say. I, and I think if last year's squad and this year's squad fight each other, it would be a one point game. Like it it would be it would be tight, it would be close. Um, and, but they, this team has a lot more depth. That's the, that's the kicker from this year and last year. Right. Um, so this year's team has a lot more depth and, and they're using it. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, interesting to see how, um, how, how they fare without Cardoso and, and, it, you know, it actually won't, won't be too interesting because the Gamecocks have seen, you know, what, what, what life is like without their center. Um, and, and possibly, you know, in the running for Naismith player of the year, um, um, in the past three years, 103 and three, I don't think no men can do that. No, absolutely. Darius. No, no, I don't, I don't know anybody who can do 103 and three, um, in the last three years. That's absurd. Like, um, you know, <laughs> the things that Dawn has been able to achieve at South Carolina is just mind boggling. Um, she's over 600 career or career wins. I believe it was, was the number she hit. Um, absolutely absurd. This team is really, really, really good. And to, that after all of the stuff that happened at the SEC tournament, um, to, to be turning around and saying that, um, you know, that, that, you know, you know, that they, they're probably going to win that game, um, without Cardoso. And it's like, yo, yeah, you know, they played without her before. No problem. Right. Like, you know, next. And, you know, I, I feel bad for that poor 16 seed that has to come into colonial life and play, you know, the, 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 the number one overall undisputed number one ranked undefeated South Carolina women's team without Camilla Cardoso, who, and again, this team is going to be playing like, this will be the next time that they hit the floor um, after, after the whole Cardoso thing. Right. So does anyone know who South Carolina will play in game one? We're trying to pull that up right now. Um, as I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it up, I'm trying to do multitask here. I appreciate everyone dealing, bearing with me here. Um, who they have in game one, but yes, 103 and three in the past three years. Talking about the women's team now, of course. Um, and I don't know if it's up yet. I'm pulling it up right now. Women's basketball tournament. Okay. Let's see. Is it up? I don't know if it is updated quite yet. Um, but again, Michael, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Um, but the South Carolina women's team, the, the undisputed number one seed um, in the game one. And so heading into game one without Camilla Cardoso, again, this team is kind of like, all right, cool. No worries. She she had to go play for her country in the middle of the season, which, again, not Presbyterian or UT Martin. Okay, yeah, RL, sweet. I, I can't have the the selection show, so I kinda, I'm kind of waiting for, um, you know, the, the bracket itself to drop as much as you guys are. Um, you know, so I kind of have the, the 
the audio on. So appreciate it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> whoever wins that game is um, in for, you know, the, the running of the beast, right? They, this team is ready to, to, to take the floor after the whole LSU thing and just get back to basketball, man. Get back to basketball. That's one thing I'm watching. It's it's going to be a high-scoring game. South Carolina is going to just absolutely blow blow them out of the water, I would expect, right? Um, you know, because, again, they did well without Cardoso. They played – they they won they, – they beat UConn without her. Um, so, it's it's ridiculous. We'll see how it goes. Um, but um, they're the number one overall seed for the fourth straight season. The things that Don Staley is doing is just incredible. Um, so, I, it'll be really, really interesting to see, but, um, yeah, I, I think that will do it for us here tonight. I'm, I'm running out of steam. We we've gone quite a bit, um, an hour and 10 minutes tonight. Um, got just over 900 people, um, 921 to be exact, um, in the stream right now. So appreciate everyone tuning in really, really successful night for the walkthrough. Um, and, and obviously for South Carolina as well. Um, again, the South Carolina men's basketball team, facing off against number 11 seeded Oregon um, on Thursday in the Midwest Regional in Pittsburgh, PPG Paints Arena on Thursday. Um, brackets at 9 o'clock, um, think on ESPN. Um, yeah, I think the women's the women's bracket is, is being broadcasted right now, I believe. Um, so the, the reveal is common. It should be out. The, the full bracket should be out soon. Um, but I, I'm going to shut things down for, for the walkthrough. Um, it, so South Carolina women's basketball, Don Staley, the number one overall ranked seed for the fourth straight season in a row. And to think that their, their main guard, um, Tahino pow, pow. Yeah. Um, it is on ESPN right now, William, the rest of the bracket, but South Carolina, the number one overall ranked seed, um, playing Presbyterian or UT Martin. And then again, um, as we talked about, um, we have LSU is in Stanford side of the bracket, right? And then Iowa and Notre Dame are in the same side. So two, you know, very, very, you know, good challenges for 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 the two, I guess, likely opponents that South Carolina will see in the, the final four. So there's some tests. I, I think South Carolina will, uh, you know, certainly have their test. Andrew says, whoever plays South Carolina women's team has no chance. Yeah. I mean, from from what they've shown yet this season, um, I, I, I would tend to agree with you. So um, but monster show today. Appreciate everyone tuning in, uh, to this week's edition of the walkthrough. Again, we will keep you posted. Um, for those of you guys on Twitter, be sure to subscribe to gamecockcentral.com on YouTube. We are live over there. Um, and we are live all of the time, um, you know, during the week. Um, so we should have a lot of good basketball content coming in. Uh, but yes, appreciate everyone tuning in as always. And, uh, I'm your host intern, Joe Machika. Long show tonight. Really, really, really good show. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, and, you know, check us out next week. Be sure to stay tuned to GamecockCentral.com. Subscribe, like, do do all the fun stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's tournament time. Happy March Madness to all those watching. And uh, I hope you guys have a good night, good week. Um, and, and stay tuned. We, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up.